Hi everyone. This video gets into how to use Bubble's API connector to connect to any API. The goal of this video is to really go over the process of reading and interpreting API documentation, understanding that information, and then creating a call in the Bubble API connector so that we can use that information and the response that we receive from our API call inside of our application. Now, before I get into how we set this up, let me go through this by exploring a specific use case. If I go into the design tab, you can see the page that I've set up here. So my use case is I want to be able to display Mars Rover images to anyone who accesses my site. I want to display these images in a repeating group here, which I will set up. And I also want to have this input box, which users can update and change and thereby modify the data that's viewable in the call. So the next step that I'm going to undertake is I'm going to access NASA's open API documentation. And what this documentation will allow me to do is just to understand how the API call has to be constructed and set up. And then by understanding that, I'll know how to interpret that information and set up an API call in Bubble to receive this information. So if I change to this tab here, I can see NASA's open API documentation. So the link to this documentation is api.nasa.gov. Essentially what the API documentation is, it's simply just the technical con content that documents the API, and it just gives us these instructions on how to effectively use and integrate this API into our bubble editor. So if I look here, there's the overview, which is where I'm starting, which just gives me a little bit of an overview of what NASA's API is. Second stage here is generate API key. So you can fill out this information and sign up and you'll be provided with an API key to use to connect to this particular API. Um, for the purposes of this demonstration, we're gonna use a demo key. So we're not actually gonna go through this step, but all you need to do is just sign up, um, follow the instructions and click sign up. The second thing that I always wanna do when I'm accessing a documentation is check if there's any kind of authentication. There can be varied types of authentication um, required before an API call. And we're going to go into this in a little bit more detail um, in, in a later video. All I need to know for this particular API is that we don't need to authenticate. So I can move on from there. The next thing that I want to do is I want to browse the APIs. So the APIs are split up by endpoints. And what essentially an endpoint is, is it just tells me how to access a particular part of information on the API server resource. So if I want to access the astronomy picture of the day, I'm going to click this one and I'm going to read this information and understand this section of the API documentation so that I can retrieve this information in my bubble editor. There's more information on what an endpoint is in the written guide that's accompanying this video and it's linked in the description. Now what I want to do is I want to access the Mars Rover photo. So I'm going to click this endpoint. Um, and when I open it here, it gives me a little bit more information on how this API is set up and how to access it. So what I can see here is that this API um, collects image data from NASA's three particular rovers that are on Mars. Um, each rover has its own set of photos stored in the database and I can query each of these separately. So that's just something to keep in mind when I'm making this API call is that I, I should query each of the rovers separately. So if I want images from Curiosity, I've got to query Curiosity. If I want them from Opportunity, I need to query Opportunity. Um, what else I can see here is how the photos and the information is organized. So it's organized by the cell or Marsh and rotation and, uh, rotation and day. Um, and what that is, is it's a parameter. So a specific piece of information that I can use to specify exactly where in the database that I want to receive the information. So I might want it from Sol 1 or Sol 1000, which is obviously, you know, a thousand days or the, a thousand Martian days in the future. I can see here the rover cameras, so specific cameras that I can access images from. And what I can also see here is the query string parameters. So these are the parameters that I can add to my API call just to get really specific information. So I can add the page or the particular camera that I want or um, the, the sole, so which day I want to receive it from. And that's a query string parameter. Again, query string parameters are really explained in a little bit more detail in the written guide accompanying this video. Next, what I can see here is an example query. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break down this example query, how it's constructed, 
and by breaking it down, we can see how we can interpret this information and add it to the Bubble API connector. So the first part here in this entire example query is what I can see is the base URL. So this is just the base URL that we're always um, going to access to access any information from this API. The next bit I can see is Mars Photo. So that's the endpoint. So that's the specific part of the server or the resource that we're going to access, which is I want to receive photos from the Mars rovers. Um, the next section here is I got the API and I've got the version. So it's version one for this API. Next, I can see the rose, rover that we are specifying. So as mentioned up above, there's three rovers and we have to specify which rover. So we're going to specify Curiosity and we're specifying the photos from Curiosity. Next, we can see this question mark symbol and then this information. So these are the query string parameters. So these are these parameters here and I can specify the information. So I got sol the parameter and then I write equals and then I write a thousand, which is the sol 1000 day, or I can write 500, for example, and that will give me different information. So these are the query string. So now I'm going to set up this API call in the API connector. So if I just copy this example query here and I jump back into my bubble editor, I'm on the plugin page with the API connector and I click add another API. So let me update the API name here. So I'm going to update it to NASA images. This is just for my internal reference. So when I'm calling the API from the design or the workflow tab, I just know which API I'm referring to. So if I had multiple APIs, just having a really useful name is just the best way to organize that. The next step is checking the authentication. So as we remember from the documentation is there's no authentication required. So I'm going to leave that as none or self-handled. I'm going to skip these sections for now as we're only setting up one API call. So we don't need any shared headers or parameters. I'm going to update this name to Mars photo. So again, this is just for my internal reference. I'm going to use it as data, leave the data type to JSON. I'm going to pop in this URL here. I'm going to leave the API method as a get request as we're asking the server to retrieve a resource for us that we want to display on our page. There's a bit more information and nuance to what API methods are. And if you want some more information, I would recommend reading that written guide. The next thing that I'm, what I'm going to actually do is I'm going to initialize that call, just that example call that I've copied and pasted. So when I initialize the call, you can see that bubble itself has received a response. So if I show the raw data, we've received a response from the NASA open API, which is just that list of photos and list of information. We can see that it's in a JSON format, which is just this this type of structuring of the information and it's in a key value pair. So this is the key ID and then this is the value. And then what we can see is that for each key, there are different values for each piece of information. And that's just really important to understand when we're using the API information on the design tab. Um, and I'll, I'll get into a little bit more detail in that. So I'll just save that here. And while that API call works, we don't actually want to set it up in this particular way. The reason why is we want to set up query string parameters. So let me just set it up. Set it up. So after this question mark are our query string parameters. So I can remove this, paste this here, I can remove this, paste this here. Then I can remove this and paste that there, remove that, paste that here, and I can just remove all of that. And if I reinitialize this call, you can see that Bubble still has that call, receives the same exact same information. What it essentially does with these parameters is when it makes that call to the NASA Open API, it adds that question mark and it adds all these parameters in. So the real question is why are we setting it up this way? Is because there's there's this checkbox which is private, or if I untick it, it means it's basically public and what private does is it hard codes the information in. But what public allows me to do is to update this information in the design tab. So a user on the page can actually update this parameter and then receive different information from the API call based on this. So just to quickly show that in action, if I pop in this text here and I insert a dynamic data and I write get data from an external API and I choose NASA images, Mars photos, which appears here, I can see that I can actually update this parameter and I can insert dynamic data such as from this input, 
I can update it. But if I go back to this plugin here and I just click private and I view it here, you can see that it's actually not here. So I can't edit it anymore. So let me go back to the plugin page, untick private, and that will just allow me to edit it. If I want to add more parameters, I can go back to the open API documentation. I can see this page here. I can update this and then I can update the values one. I can choose private on private. I'm going to keep this one as private for now. And then what I always want to do when I modify that API call. So I want to reinitialize the call just to make sure that it's working. So now what I want to do is display the information that I received from my API call on the design tab. So basically I want to use it to be able to view all these images from the Mars Rover. So if I switch over to my design tab here and I can see the page that I've set up before, what I want is this repeating group to have a list of Mars Rover images here. So what I need to do is I need to update the type of content and the data source for the images. So I'm going to update this type of content to Mars photos, photos, and this type of content has appeared when I set up that API connector call. I initialized the call and then Bubble realized that the format or the type of content of that API response that we receive is Mars Photos Photos. So that's why it's appearing there. Now I have the data source and I want to click get data from an external API. So the API provider here is going to be NASA Images Mars Photos. So that's just the name references that I have added in the API connector. So I click that here. And I will just click that there. What we can also see is a parameter sol, which is the one with the private box unticked. And the reason why is basically I want a user who jumps onto the page is able to update this input, input A with a new value, just say 50. And they'll be able to say images from 50 sol or day 50. And the way I'm going to set this up is I'm going to click insert dynamic data and then click input A's value. So based on whatever input the user has put in input A's value, I want this repeating group of images to update or this repeating group's information to update. So now I need to add the image itself in so that users can actually view these Mars Rover images. So I click insert dynamic data. I've got the current cells, Mars photos, photo, and I've got this this list of keys from the API response from that JSON formatting of key value pair. And the one that I want is image source. So this is just an image URL and that'll be displayed to the user. So I just want to make this really clear where this, this information from this API call is coming from. So if I jump over to the plugins tab and I reinitialize this call, what I can see here or what I showed previously was this raw data. And what this raw data has is a key value pair, which is that JSON format. And then for every single photo, it has the same key, but a different value. And if I go back up to here, all these keys are appearing here. And the bubble response is coming from Mars Photos Photo. So when I look at it there, I had current cells, Mars Photos Photo, and then it had the keys all appearing. So ID, soul, camera ID, camera name, so on and so forth. And I can actually capture and display this information on every single repeating group entry. So let me just click save here. And let me just display a little bit more data from this API call. So if I go here and I click insert dynamic data, what I want to also display is the camera name so that a user can understand which camera or took this photo. And then I want to update this to the rover name. So the rover name appears as well. So let's preview the page and check if it's working. So it looks like it's working here. So I can see that this is the image. This is the camera that, that took it. This is the rover name. If I scroll down, I can see more images appearing. I'm on Sol 1000, but let's try updating this. And we can see that the images have updated. So we've got new images and all the information updated here. So this video really went into how to use Bubble's API connector to connect to any API. There is an accompanying written reference guide on the API connector linked in the description below. If you have any questions or feedback, please feel free to leave a comment on this video.